Um, and that's where it all started. I mean, that's where it all started for, for me. And, and, and since then, I've just been on this journey of, of online entrepreneurship and, and marketing. But um, I also spent six years. And, and, and so that all started in 1999. And then, and then in 2010 is when I jumped into the mortgage industry. So I started, I was a lender and I got, took under the wings of, of, my, of my first mentor, um, which is still my best friend today here in San Diego. Um, but he owns a very successful mortgage company. They do, they do very, very well, very, very well. He started that in 2000 and I think he started that company in 2005. And then I, and then I came aboard with him in 2010 and, and we, we crushed it from, well, I crushed it with him from 2010 to 2016. Mm. And so that's what kind of gave me all this information on mortgages and, and real estate. And, 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 and that's when I started networking with a ton of realtors right? Mm -hmm. Cause I was the lender. I was getting everyone's client approved. Right. Um, so that's where I met a lot of real estate agents. And then, and that's kind of where the light bulb went on for me, where I'm like, man, these real estate agents that I'm networking with 100% of them are missing the boat when it comes to leveraging social media marketing and Facebook advertising. Like I knew, I knew for a fact, 100% of them were still spending money on offline marketing, which was expensive and just simply not the answer anymore. You know what I mean? So, so in, so in 2016, I'm already getting sick and tired of mortgages. So that's when I left and started my own thing here that I, that I currently do now, which is inspired digital. So all I've been doing since 2016 is helping real estate agents um, with their social media marketing and Facebook advertising. So I've been doing that since 2016 and, and now to this day have hundreds of clients and building a YouTube channel and, and building, you know, just content around this entire industry of, what it takes for a small business owner to capture a lead on the internet, you know, and, and now in today's world, social media, you know, so I guess that's kind of what you're looking to do is really, how do I really leverage this social media thing, right? Like, how do I really get my brand out there? How do I get this message in front of the right people? Is that what you're kind of, you know, thinking? It is. Um, and, and ours is a little twofold. There's a little bit of, uh, of distinction. So mm -hmm. let me, let me just tell you about that. Yeah. Um, and just when you say social media, are you exclusive to Facebook or are you no. handling other channels? All of it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, when it comes to social media, the top ones, there's only, there's only a handful of top, top platforms. Right. So yeah, I'm referring to Facebook, Instagram, yeah. LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter. Um, and those are kind of your top five, Facebook, right. Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Pinterest. You know, yeah. then you got TikTok for the younger, you know, younger, and there's a few yeah. other platforms, but then also YouTube is where, is where I put, to tell you the truth, YouTube is where I put 99% of my content mm. is, is, is what I do, um, is, is long form video, um, tutorials, teaching people how to run Facebook ads, teaching people how to capture leads on the internet, teaching people how to build landing pages and, and email autoresponders. That's what I'm, that's what I talk about on my YouTube channel. Mm, okay. So, yeah, I'm referring to everything. Okay. Um. It. So let me just give you a little bit of background. Of yeah, for sure. Know, I'd love to hear. Me. And um. So I um. I have been an entrepreneur for many many years, mostly mm. in the entertainment industry. Um. And uh, about ten years ago, a little over ten years ago, I had a car accident. Mm. Really hurt and um, set back my life um, quite a bit. And wow. during that time uh, of healing, it took me well over a year to heal, I, I um, realized like life was short and I wanted some of that passive income, right? Mm. I reread Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I was like, you know, I've been an entrepreneur, but honestly, my businesses are running me. You know, I've really just created jobs for myself and mm -hmm. I really want the time and the freedom to mm -hmm. do other things. And that's mm -hmm. when I started um, educating and investing. So my first model was to flip and then reinvest that money that I'm flipping with long-term buy and holds. So that's what I've been doing. So I flip here in LA, I reinvest money and um, I have single families in, in Memphis, Tennessee and multifamilies in Tucson, Arizona. Amazing. And then I started developing here. So I'm finishing my first development just in the next month. So that's cool. Mm. Um, but what happened about four years ago is I, you know, real estate can be rough, you know, it mortgage, mortgage, you know, like you're oh, yeah. constantly like putting it out there and, um, mm -hmm. oh, and I, I want to just mention this because it has something to do with things. And that is I, um, I wanted to change my life after my accident and I didn't know how. And, um, 
I started, my brother was like, you know, maybe you should go to Tony Robbins, you know, and, you know, do some of his work. So that's what I started to do. And then I, I did all of his work and now I work for him. Um, I, I, I'm what he's called, it's called a trainer and there's about 175 of us worldwide and we, he flies us out to the events and we help people transition. And during that time, I realized like, first of all, personal growth became really important to me because I realized without the mindset of growth, without the mindset of being able, I, I can't do any of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, and then, you know, and then I started in the real estate stuff. And I also realized when I was in that realm that it, it, there was a, um, a calling for me to help other people grow, you know, and I really love it. And I really, um, felt, you know, pr compelled to do that. Well, I'm hitting my head up against the wall because I can't get deals. And I'm like, where are the women? <laughs> you know, where are women investors, right? And I, I don't mean like, take this the way they way, but you meet a lot of women agents, which mm -hmm. I, I don't understand why they're not investing, but that's a whole other conversation. But where are the women investors, right? So I got a, like Man. a bunch of women investors together for a brunch. And we sat and we talked and we weren't all investing in the same ways, you know, mm -hmm. um, there was, you know, somebody had, uh, there's, there's these two partners and they have a uh, storage units across the U S and there's, you know, uh, everybody was investing in different ways, but we were helping each other. Right. It was like, Oh, you need a lawyer for your tenant. I got a lawyer. That's great at that. You need a foundation guy. I got a foundation guy. Right. We were helping each other and we were like, mm -hmm. let's do this regularly. So we started meeting every other month at somebody's house and there was wine involved and we would, you know, we'd just mm. have fun. And I realized like I would, you know, this network was really important to me. And I'm like, there's a whole group of women out there that don't even know about these rock star women because at most real estate investing clubs, it's usually men at the front of the room. You know, there's maybe a woman that speaks once a year. Mm -hmm. at the front of the room. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's not to say anything horrible about men because I've gotten tons of great education from them. But mm -hmm. um, when I see a woman up there that's doing it, it really allows me to be like, oh, she's doing it. I can do it. Right. So that was the beginning of the Women's Real Estate Network. So how long opened, ago was that? What year was that? That was four years ago, I four think. Four years ago. And so we opened, opened a chapter, just a meetup, opened a chapter in L.A., and then I had a friend who was in Seattle who was an investor in Seattle. So we opened a chapter in Seattle. Mm -hmm. So now we have six chapters. So LA, wow. Seattle, OC, San Diego, Phoenix, and we just opened up Atlanta in the fall. Wow. wow. So here's like kind of the difference. And that is those chapters meet on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. You know, so there is an actual real, real community, like a face-to-face -face community. Mm -hmm. And then there is an online community as well. Um, and we're looking at expanding, right? We're looking at continuing this growth and expanding. Mm -hmm. um, we started like an annual event um, like three years ago. And uh, last year we had 250 women come out. We sold out wow. and it was a one day event. This year we're kind of stretching ourselves. It's a two day event. Um, mm -hmm. with our feet, a lot of the feedback was that um, it was great event, but it didn't go into a lot of meat and potatoes. So we're offering a lot more education this year. Mm -hmm. And so it's longer, it's two days um, and it's uh, a little more expensive. Mm -hmm. So our, you know, marketing strategy has had to adjust and I'm not quite sure if we're really getting it right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a media company that helped us last year with it. And um, they've grown and changed and they kind of took on some helping of us this year, mm -hmm. but honestly I haven't felt like um, their attention has been with it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I didn't know like, and they're only doing Facebook and I don't know. I just thought, you know what? I need some support. I need more support mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. in, in promoting this event. And then also in, you know, looking at where we're going as um, what, you know, where we're going in, in whole and, mm -hmm. you know, looking at partnering, you know, with somebody for that. So I was talking to Rochelle and she, she mentioned you and she said that you've helped her out in some ways. I'm not quite sure. You know, we didn't get into detail. I just like contacted you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, let's just get to it. Let's just, I'm like, okay, okay Rochelle, I'll contact him. <laughs> right? the damn call Rochelle, right? <laughs> yes. I, I mean, I, I just, and, and, and to me, every, every business is the same. Every business is the same in, in the sense of 
of reaching out marketing and trying to get the end consumer's attention. Like we're all trying to do the same thing. doesn't matter what type of business you're building. Yeah. We're all trying to get someone's attention. And so, yes, today everyone's attention is on social media. Um, and when you even narrow it further, it all starts with Facebook. I mean, if you want to kind of look at oh, the- Oh, yeah, company, it definitely does. I mean, and there's a reason why that other company was kind of all in on Facebook because Facebook just continues to be the dominator. But it's where, it's, where your, it's where your ROI is really at as far as ad budget, as far as marketing money. Like if, if we have a dollar to put out, that's where it goes out. It goes out through Facebook. Because yeah. with Facebook, we can narrow target. We can laser target that person. Like, like you're either going to do that. And that's why when I do these strategy calls and I'm consulting, I'm like, man, okay, you own, you're a chiropractor. You, you own a yoga studio. You're a real estate investor. You're a real estate agent. It's like, man. You have two options. Number one, we're going to spend all this, all this time and all this energy posting organically on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Facebook. Like those are the top five. And then, and then YouTube. If you have video content, then that's number six. You're putting that we, content. We have on. a YouTube channel. Yeah. So, you See, so you're building that also, right? So that's the sixth platform. So option one is we continue to put out this content every freaking day until we get people to really engage and comment on our post and maybe send us a message on the next event. Like that's what you're trying to do. That's what everyone's trying to do. Option one, everyone is just trying to post organically. And, and, and what I call that is throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what sticks because it's not targeting. It's not, it, I mean, you, you can say you're attracting the right audience, but who's to say that? I mean, how many friends do we have on Facebook? How many followers do we have on Instagram? How many of those are actual potential people that we'd love to work with? The, 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 the percentage is so small. Like when you look at your organic following, are, are they all women? Maybe they're not. Maybe it's a mixture of men and women. So that's why if your ideal client is, is, a, is a female, okay, so then why is our Twitter with 3,700 followers, why is 45% of them men? You know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. Like organic, it's like, it's kind of wishy-washy. It's like, man, I'm going to spend all this time to build these followers when they're not even necessarily all my ideal clients. Right. So it's either we do that. So that's option one. Option one, every business, we're all on social media trying to get attention. That's option one. Everyone's doing that because it's free, because it's easy. But, but at the same time, that's not even easy because if you're really, really crushing it, you better be posting five to 10 times per day on each platform. And who has the time for that? Like, like, uh, like seriously, if you want your Instagram to, to grow, you're posting literally five to 10 times per day. If you're trying to build your Facebook business page and you're trying to do it organically and you're just randomly posting on your Facebook business page, good luck. Like Facebook only shows it to shows that post to about 1% of your total likes. So if you have 700 likes or 1,700 likes, only 1% 1 of them are, are even seeing your post. And the question is, are those 1% even in the area? Are they even all female? Are they even our ideal client? Or are these 1,700 people that like our page randoms? So that's what you're dealing with. That's what everyone's dealing with. And that's why Facebook, again, is option number two, which should be option one. It should be your only option. Because with Facebook, whether it's Facebook ads or Instagram ads, I can just plug in what the heck I'm looking for. And tell Facebook, hey, I'm looking for a female. I'm looking for in between the ages of 25 and 55. I'm looking for someone with an interest in Robert Kiyosaki. I'm looking for someone who has an interest in investing. And I'm looking for a person in this state, this state, and that state. Like I can just get to it. And I can just simply run an ad in five minutes and literally get the attention of thousands of people that fit that criteria that's the difference. Like that's the, that's the only difference. Like that's right. the biggest difference. So while everyone is messing around with social media, it's like, man, for what? Like, that's why all my content doesn't get splatted all over the place. All my content either goes into a Facebook ad targeting my exact client or onto YouTube where with YouTube, I do a lot of long form video. So that content, whether it's short form or long form, that content goes onto YouTube because YouTube is the only platform that's going to send me a monthly check. You and I, we're over here talking about- Can you say long form? Can you just- 10 minutes, 10, minutes or, 10 oh. minutes or more, 10 minutes or more video. 
right? So you at, at these events or you just day in the life of, of you building your business, you're, you're, you're putting up this video content. Long form is about more than 10 minutes, 10 minutes plus. But my point is, is that my content goes on to YouTube because now YouTube sends me a monthly check. Mm -hmm. So you and I were over here talking about passive income. I literally have built up a passive income. I'll show you my income right now. Mm -hmm. I literally built up a passive income with YouTube all because for the past 12 months, rather than trying to put my content all over the place when no one cares, I just put it all on YouTube and now, and now YouTube's paying me for the ads running on these videos. Mm -hmm. I could have put that. Most people would have put that same video on Instagram. They would have put that same video on Facebook on their business page. And then they would have shared it to their personal page. It's like, man, that's such a waste of time. That's what everyone's doing. That's what you're doing. That's what everyone, everyone's doing that. Everyone's doing that. And that's why you have to run a Facebook ad because again, I don't got time to waste. I need, I need to get in front of 15,000 women who, who all have an interest in Robert Kiyosaki right now. Right. Like I ain't got time to post 10 times a day on all these damn platforms. Yeah. Right. Like who has time for that? You know what I mean? So Facebook ad directly to that client. And then, and then, and then again, all the other content, I put it on YouTube. I would, I would recommend you put it on YouTube because in 12 months, when you build a subscriber base and you start, you start building followers on YouTube again, in, 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 in I, I say 12 months, worst case, 12 months, three videos, you start putting up a few videos per week on that YouTube channel in 12 months. Um, it'll be at a, at, at a good level as far as subscribers, um, where, where that monthly check can start building up. Like I'll show you my monthly check right now. It's, it just crossed 500. I, it only started happening a few months ago. I just started using YouTube not too long ago. Um, and now, now my passive income, my monthly residual is already at 526 for the month, Deb. Mm -hmm. Like I, I tell people all the time, how much money do I need invested in real estate? I'm out here in San Diego. So how much money do I need invested in real estate to, to have a positive cash flow of 500 a month? Like mortgages out here is 3,000, 3,500 for the mortgage. Like, right. <laughs> like how right. am I going to get a positive cash flow out of that? I'll hey, you know what I mean? So David, let me, I, I just want to introduce Jen real quick. Jen, hey. David, hey. David, how David, how started. David watched, started. David, David started. read the little purple book when he was 19 and up and quit college. <laughs> oh, got it. Read the Bible. Good for right? you. Welcome to the religion. Right? <laughs> Deborah over here, she got me started. And once I get started, I sometimes I can't stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, but I, um, I heard that you're talking about YouTube. Actually, I start my YouTube channel and I'm launching in a couple of days. Awesome. A couple of videos. I just, I wanted to hit the hundred subscribers so I can have my own link. And my goal is in the upcoming, you know, two or three weeks to hit the 500 subscribers. Um, but talking about that, I, I, I did took a couple of classes on YouTube. I just don't know with um, uh, YouTube for bosses with, um, I forgot her name, um, but she specialized on teaching that. Now, my question for you is, what is the conversion on, on YouTube ads? And what is the engagement of people? Because because at this point, uh, what we're looking is for strategies. I mean, we want to build this in the long term. Don't get me wrong, David. But in the upcoming five weeks, we want to be very focused on bumping um, conversions for the Ignite Your Fire within. And I think we have yes. some materials and videos that can be put together fairly quickly. Um, but I think we need a marketing strategy and an idea of the conversion so we know how much should be the investment? Well, you're either going to be running YouTube ads. It's not mm -hmm. uploading YouTube. It's not just what, what Deborah and I was talking about and what I was just kind of talking about for the last couple of minutes was, was just simply organic, uploading okay. your, your videos to YouTube and okay. eventually building a subscriber base. So then you can start being monetized and YouTube starts mm -hmm. sending you money because mm -hmm. that doesn't happen on any other platform. That's just simple organic. Now, if you're referring to YouTube advertising and actually running your video ads on YouTube to get people to click and go to your landing page where they actually register for an event, that's different. Mm -hmm. That's a YouTube ad. Okay. So, so as you're watching videos on YouTube, any video whatsoever, and an ad comes on and then you got a skip ad, that's a YouTube ad. Mm -hmm. Those right there convert at a higher rate than Facebook ads by a little higher only because not as many people are running YouTube ads. Um, many, many people are running Facebook ads. Many, many businesses run Facebook ads. So the cost is just a little higher. We're talking pennies. We're not talking 
a huge difference. We're talking it, it, maybe maybe on Facebook it'll cost me two bucks to get a lead, and on YouTube it might cost me a dollar. Still a huge difference when you're talking big big budget, right? When you're talking you know spending ten grand at the deal, and we're getting you know YouTube conversions at five grand. Obviously that's a big difference. But if you're not spending if you're not even thinking thousands of dollars per month, it's not a big difference at all. Um, and, and because again, not as many are running YouTube ads. Now I don't run YouTube ads. I run Facebook ads. Um, I run Facebook video ads. I run Instagram video ads. And just with, again, the cost isn't that different with that alone. You can crush it. You can, you, and, and again, that's what I was telling Deb. I'm like, you're either going to spend all this time organically and just posting and trying to get people to comment and trying to get people to DM me, or you're going to run a Facebook ad and get straight to that, that prospect and promote that event so if you have the content facebook ads that's all you guys need to be doing that's it run, run some run some weekly facebook ads promoting that event getting people to click and register that's it there ain't nothing else to it when you're handling social media ads like facebook um what what is what i know that it depends also what we have on the ads and we're accounting in your expertise when we start running those ads what is your normal conversion with your clients, an average or a range? Well, I run ads for real estate agents, so it's very okay. different. I don't, I don't, I, I'm still trying to figure out what you guys are doing, but now I, I kind of get the idea. You're promoting an event. You're looking to attract women investors. That's, that's a completely Maybe different. Go to our, our Ren Inspires page. So yeah, let's go to, let's, Ren is, you know, Women's Real Estate Network, Ren. So we are, we have our URL as Ren Inspires. It's W W R E N Ren Inspires. Um, here we go. Is it this one right here? Yeah. See, so if you guys are, if you guys are looking to promote an event, that's not, that's not hard at all. I mean, that's a simple Facebook ad trying to get people to register for your event. But at the same time, what you want to, what, what I spent, you know, the last few minutes talking to Deborah about is that you're either going to put a bunch of content out and you're going to keep posting over here when Facebook's only showing it to 1% of your 737, or you're going to just start running Facebook ads. And, and, and that's it. This right here should have been a Facebook ad targeting females who follow Robert Kiyosaki and are in, interested in investing. But yet, a person will come over here and post it on their business page, get 266 people and five people to like it and think that they're actually doing something. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I, I could have run a Facebook ad on this and got 26,000 women to see it in about a seven day period. Mm. That's the difference. And so conversions, all that stuff, it's different for everyone. I just say, just start doing it. Like start doing it and start seeing what your conversion rate is. Like I run, real, I, I run Facebook ads for real estate agents who have listings of property of residential and, and people who are just looking for, for, for clients in general, buyers or sellers. And we run a lot of video ad. We run a lot of video ad. So if you have all this type of content like this, Jen, start putting them out, start getting, start targeting women, start targeting women who follow Robert Kiyosaki or who have that type of interest and start getting thousands of people to know who you guys are. That's where it starts. And that's why a lot of people, they come to me and they're like, David, I got to make this happen by tomorrow. I'm like, dang, dude, like you kind of wait until the last minute. Like, because with Facebook ads or with any ads, whether it's a YouTube ad or whether it's a Facebook ad, and in this case, it's, a, it's a, the content happens to be a video, which is the best. What you want to start doing is you have to start warming the audience up to you. Like, like, so if you have four weeks or if you have five weeks to prepare, you need to start now. Okay. Like, like no one knows about this brand. So, so if you ran it, if you ran this as an ad right now, you can't expect a great conversion rate. Like you cannot expect a, 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 the cheapest price on your next lead. Like, because no one even knows you yet. The way Facebook ads work is you want it, you want it, you have to get the audience warmed up to you. So you have to start running video ads to get thousands of people to know who you are. That's week number one. Week number two, you then take another video and you retarget everyone who watched video number one. So now you're just, you, you keep getting in front of this audience. You keep getting in front of this audience two weeks, three weeks into the fourth week. That's when people are like, okay, wow, they're really doing something big. I need to see what these ladies are up to. And that's when people start clicking the button. That's when they start clicking, learn more. That's okay. when they start opting into to what you're doing because now they're familiar. Now they keep seeing you. Now you're building a buzz. And again, yeah. it, it just, so happen, you, just so you know, we have started that process. Um, we have uh, some, 
video testimonial ads that have been running. Good. We have some amazing testimonials from our last event, uh, our last annual event, mm -hmm. that have been getting some really great reaction because they're um, not only informational, but they're emotional driven as well. And mm -hmm. so, you know, but what we've been having problems with is that, you know, uh, is the conversion to the ticket, you know? So, so are you guys driving it to an event? Like, is that what you're running an ad on is, is an event? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So ignite your fire within April 4th. You see that event? This one right here. Yeah. That's okay. So you have, you have ads running on this right now? Yes. And they're not converting? They're not converting to ticket sales. Okay. So then <clears throat> let me click on this. Ad. There's clicking happening, but not, not conversions. So this is what, this is what people need to buy right now. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. How many ads have you ran so far on, on this specific event? Is it just, the, I don't like know. How many the ads? Can you show us where to look at that? Cause we, it's, we have a social media team. Have, right. We've, We've been, been running, just, you know, um, like five ads a week for the last probably, oh, since the January 1st. Man, and, 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 and you're not seeing a high conversion at all? We saw a higher conversion. We changed the ads around um, just about a week and a half ago. But most of the conversion has been coming from our membership, which has been great. So we've, you know, we've sold like, you know, 90 some tickets. We want to get to 250, mm -hmm. you know. This last week has been not good conversion rates. See, so... You would simply log into your ads manager, this back end part, and you would see it right here. So cost per result. Yeah. You'll see, you'll see that cost right here. You'll see the amount spent. You'll see um, the results. So you'll see the actual results, like how many ticket sales, what was the price. So this right here, this dashboard how is that we right get there? I forgot how is that we get there. All you do is you just go to your page and you're going to click on I'm sorry, somebody's at my door. Please okay. excuse me for a second. Yeah, for sure. So you get to the drop down, manage ads? Yes. And, okay. Yeah, that would bring you down to the dashboard. So I always tell people, bookmark this page. You for sure want to bookmark this page. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you just click the drop down and it takes you straight to manage ads. Mm -hmm. And then once you, once you bookmark that page, another page you want to bookmark, you click the green button mm -hmm. and you want to bookmark this page over here as well. Okay. So this right here is where it all starts. Step one, step two, step three. This is the basic setup, setup of a Facebook ad. And so what you guys, whoever's running the ads, they must be running um, engagement. And then it's this one right here. Event responses. Mm -hmm. So that's the ad that should be running for that type of mm -hmm. campaign. Engagement event responses. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I mean, there could be, there could be a few reasons, a few, a few reasons why they're not converting as well. Maybe, maybe that, maybe that's not the exact ad that they're running. Maybe they're doing engagement, maybe they're doing engagement and they're doing post engagement. That could be one reason. So if I come in here and I'm like, and I'm like, okay, I want people to engage with this post. I want people to register. I want people to, to I want the buzz to happen. I want people to start talking about it. Some people will come over here and think that it, that it's an engagement, post engagement, oh, when that's yeah. not it. It's an, it's event responses. We need people to to respond to this event that's happening. Okay. So so that's the one right there. If you're not running that one, that could be the reason. So if you're running any of these other ones, some people run traffic. Some people will try to run conversions. Um, some people try to run brand awareness and reach. Or or if it's a video, if it's a video that you guys are putting out, a, a person would come in here and think, okay, it's a video, so let me run video views. Mm -hmm. and, and when you set up a video views campaign, you mm -hmm. could put the link to this right here. This is the link where when they see the ad, they click on learn more and it brings them straight here or, or whatever the call to action may be. And it's a video that you're, that you're, that you're posting. Mm -hmm. So you would think that video views would be the more, more ideal one, but no. It's not that one. So Deborah, can you send, can you share your screen really quick with David? Yeah, sure. And if you can go to Facebook. 
because at this point what we need i think i think we we want to strategize for all the future but at this point is what do we do in the upcoming four weeks let's call it that way to really maximize what it has been done and for example i know forbes riley's she's one of our main speakers and she has like a over 800,000 people on her Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So how do we leverage that? And when mm -hmm. she's going to be the main speaker. So we haven't been tapping into that and our social media, you know, we talk to them, but they, they honestly, I don't think that anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> where do you want me to go? Can you click in the arrow next to the question mark at the top right corner? Yeah. That drop down. Yeah. One thing you can do if, if, if her page is that big, Spanish ads. Mm -hmm. what would be so easy to do is simply when you're setting up your ad, you're targeting everyone who follows her page. Yeah, exactly. And that's so, why I was like surprised. I'm like, we have a video and an interview with her already mm -hmm. and it doesn't have many views. Even when she has so many people and I'm like, why we, we haven't tapped into that. Why is this not loading? Do I go here? Yeah, click yeah, yeah, click on your name there. There we go. And then can you open it up as well? Can you just spread yeah, expand the window? Just so we don't yeah, there we go. Perfect. Account overview. Should I be going here? Sorry, I don't know. No, you're fine. Click on campaigns. Okay. Yeah, they don't have anything set. So let's let me let me see if I can if I can find where it's at. So let's let this load really quick. I'll find it if it's here. Yeah. So click on, um, so nothing is in this account. Click on your profile picture to the top right, Deborah. Yeah, right there. Click on that one and hit, and, and is it, could it be in any oh, of these other right. accounts? Yeah, most likely. Yeah, yeah click on that one. Network, No, it's not. It's not in that. Click on add account overview to the left. Or actually, yeah, you can click on that. See if it's. Yeah. So those ones aren't even aren't even set up. So maybe whoever's running them for you, or they're running it out of their ad ads manager. Do you know? No, they're not. They're I just got a notice. Hold on, just a second. Here, give me a second. You guys keep talking. I'll be right with you. So I think that what we're looking for is, David, is maybe like uh, logistics and what we should do. Can you help us out? Uh, I mean, how can we optimize this to get the most out of it in the upcoming four weeks as we are developing everything else in the upcoming year? And everything is around promoting this event, right? Correct. Yeah, Correct. Just for the next four weeks, you need to just pour it on. But from what you're telling me, you're already pouring it on. So whoever is running these ads for you just may not be running them the right way. Um, they, that, that's the bottom line. They just may not. I don't think they understand our target market pretty well and what we are doing in regards to even the event. And I say that because even they question our prices and they're not real estate investors or do any of those things. So um, they believe that our market hangs out in Instagram. Um, and I, I don't know if that's true or not, but they are more Instagram driven kind of Facebook. Okay. I don't think they have the abilities. It's just in the past, you know, it was the only people that we knew. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, but I don't think they're running this in the right way. What's your budget? What are you spending? Deborah, you know that. 500 a month? Yeah. 500. Let, let, me ask, let me ask it this way. What, what do you plan on spending in the next four weeks? We could spend up, you know, between 500 and 1,000. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, so that. Is that it, enough? I don't, I don't know. Is this what you were looking for? Yeah, so go ahead and close out. Um, hit the top left, that arrow. Yeah, that this? One. yeah, there you go. The expand. No, the top, yeah, to the left of, the, of search. No, up. <laughs> Next to search, the right arrow. There. there we go. Close that out real quick. Okay, so let's look at this really quick. 
So what, so then these are three ads. Okay, so the third one is off. It's those first two that are on. Click on, okay, so you click on the, the, the um, yeah, go back into the edit. So right where you have a check mark, just open up edit. Okay, so, so they're, they're optimizing for conversions. So they're running a completely different, different ad. They're, um, and let me look at the numbers real quick, close out this. So they're not, so what I was telling you, Jen, is, is for the event, it's engagement event responses. Correct. These guys are not running that one. They're running conversions. Conversions is, conversions is to get people to buy. Conversions is to get, is to get people to register. But what I use conversions for is when I have my own landing page. So for example, when I'm getting someone to, to just simply register for maybe a webinar that I have coming up, or if I'm trying to get someone to download my free book, mm -hmm. meaning I'm taking them off of Facebook. I'm taking them, I'm taking them to a landing page. I'm taking them to an independent web page where I need to get them to do something. So, so conversions is normally ran when you're, when you're taking them off of Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, in your case, the event is set up on Facebook. So why, why, why conversions? Why? Um, I mean, because all I have to do is run it, run event responses to the event and, and, and run ads to the event because, because that's where I need people to register. That's where people are clicking and then they go to Eventbrite, right? They click there. So they're just running a different type of ad and you can see the results. There's nothing 45 bucks spent link clicks, Click on, click on the, um, the second one, Deborah, the, um, yeah, the, yeah. Open up the second one, uncheck that one. Yeah. Open up this one. So this one, they're running conversions as well. So one thing that I would be doing also is running the event responses since the event is set up on Facebook. So that's what, that's what I would, I would, I would change. I mean, obviously that's not, and close out this, let me go back. Let's go back to the to the dashboard real quick, close out this one. Um, okay, so then, yeah, the third one was off. Go to, yeah, let's look at, let's look at the, go back to the first one, check the first box and let's, let's um, not edit. Yeah, close out the edit, just leave the check. Click on the middle tab, add sets for one campaign. Up at the, the top, right. At the top in the tabs. Yeah, right there. Okay, so they have, Okay, so they're running multiple ad sets. So let's open up the, let's open up, let's see which one, 22, 22, they both spent. Okay, so open up the sec, open up, yeah, open up that one. Click edit. See, so all their, yeah, so that purchase they're running conversions with that pixel, with that conversion event. So that, that Eventbrite, that Eventbrite, that's not your web page, right? That's Eventbrite's, right? So if I click on, open up the tab, go to Facebook real quick, click on that Eventbrite link. When, when a person clicks on it and they go and purchase that ticket, they're taken to a confirmation page, I would assume. Right, like after they purchase, they would go to. I can't hear you. No, we can't hear you, Deborah. Yeah, I, I saw you. I saw you doing gestures and everything, and I'm like, is she talking to us or she's talking to someone else? I don't know what's going on. There we okay, go. now we can hear you. Oh, good. I'm so sorry. sorry. So, um, so we've been messing with either taking them to our website page, which is igniteyourfirewithin.com where they go and they can buy tickets from, it has a lot more detail. It has a video on it. It has the agenda on it. It has more information on it. Or we've been messing with taking them to just Eventbrite. So we have like two different places that they can buy. And so we've, that's why I think they've gone for the conversions because they're taking them off of Facebook and not yeah. buying directly from Facebook. Okay. So then, yeah, yeah, exactly. So that, so then, the conversions would be for, for, yeah, if you're taking them to your page, if you're, so go back to a screen share real quick. Let's look at the, um, okay. So go back to the ads manager. Let's look at the ads manager again. Okay. So then that, that is taking them open up. I, think the, I can't the remember where tab. it was. Going to the right. 
It's the ones that the third tab, Deborah, where it says ads manager next to 93 in run inspire tab. There's sorry, there we go. Okay, so then yeah, they're optimizing, they're optimizing for the right thing. So purchase um if that pixel, that pixel should be on your on your on your confirmation page. So pull up your pull up pull up your yeah go to your go to your web page where that information is at on your web page where they can actually purchase. Well, okay, but I'm gonna just do that with this disclaimer that we had an infection with malware this weekend and that could be thrown off everything then. Oh, yeah, just, but that was this weekend. Yeah. It just happened on okay, Saturday. Okay. So, yeah. So to be running this ad the right way, which which they have that part set up correctly. That part is is what you want to do conversions, mm -hmm. and you're 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 um, optimizing for purchase. But this next part must be. It, this is a requirement for sure, for sure. So show me the page where they can purchase. So right now, this um, oh right now they. Oh, sorry. Okay, so they register now. So they can buy now and they buy now to a different server that purchases. Okay, so when they purchase, here's here's the million dollar question. When they purchase and they're taken to a confirmation page, hey John, thank you or hey Stacy, thank you so much for purchasing. And 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 then they have their itinerary or whatever, right? Yeah. That confirmation page, your Facebook pixel should be on it. Yes. It is? Yes, kind of. Okay. Yeah. If, if it's not, that's what's throwing everything off. That Facebook pixel, that, so for example, let me show you, let me show you, well, I can, I can easily show you what I mean. Let me share my screen real quick. Um, I have to continue. This will stop. Yeah, let me share my screen. Okay. So this is... And this is the same exact thing for, for yours. This right here, let me go to incognito. I would be running conversions for, let's go with, okay, so let's say in my case, I have a book and I am running a Facebook ad to get people to download my book. Whether it's a purchase, whether it's a download, it's the same thing because an individual is coming over here, they're entering their information and they're clicking send me the book. It could be where the person's coming over here, they're entering their credit card information and they're clicking buy now. It's the same thing. It's a conversion. And so when I'm running ads, when you're running ads for an event or you're running ads for something like this, the Facebook pixel, this is what happens. That person comes over here to the registration page. They register and they're taken, send me the book or purchase for $4.69 right now. They're taken to this thank you page. This thank you page is where your Facebook pixel needs to be on and this, and, and that's what Facebook has to know. So, so, so it's this page, it's the confirmation page. It's not the purchase page. It's the thank you for ordering page. That Facebook pixel needs to be on that page and that page. So for example, this is my page. This is thank you for purchasing. This is my URL for this thank you page. What I do with this is I then copy it and create a custom conversion inside of Facebook and let Facebook know, hey, I am looking to get people to this page. And that's when you run a conversions ad. Mm -hmm. so, if you're, so, so what they have set up is they have a conversions ad running. But again, the million dollar question is, is the confirmation page the conversion page? Is that, is that what we're telling Facebook? Mm -hmm. Is my Facebook pixel on it, number one? And number two, is that page, is that URL, is that URL set up inside of Facebook under a custom conversion? Yeah. Like, I have a question for you. Yeah. When you use places like Eventbrite and you set up your pixels in the pages, does it work the same or have you ever you had that? Can you set up your pixels? Yeah, I know you can. Okay. So, so then, in, yeah. in our member clicks page, they have a problem. They have a problem setting up the pixel in the conversion page. So they've just had to put the pixel code in the headers of, in the header of our site. So it's not super accurate, but it's the best that they can do with how they're set up because I don't, that's where my payment processor is for that. So we, we've also put pixels in Eventbrite, but I didn't know if you'd had experience with that or not. Yeah, as long it, it's all the same. No matter what software, no matter what platform, no matter what page, it goes on. 
it goes on the confirmation page. The pixel goes on the confirmation page. And that confirmation page needs to be set up. The URL needs to be set up as a custom conversion. So I can check yours. Let, let's go back to yours real quick, share your screen, and let's see if that um, URL is set up as a custom conversion. So close this one out. Hit that to the very left, that arrow next to the word search. Yeah, close that one out. And click the three lines at the top. You see ads manager in those three lines. Yeah, top left, there you go. And then click on custom conversions. I would think that they'd have this part down. Custom would, conversions. Yeah, in the middle. Custom conversions towards the bottom. Oh, there we go. There we go. So this right here is, 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 is where it's all at. This, I would think that they have this part for sure. And they don't. And they don't. They're, is this the right account? Deborah Razo's business? Is that the same one we were in? Because sometimes by default, Facebook will put us in a different account. Is that the one that we're... No, I don't remember. Sorry. Yeah, so you have these three. You got to always make sure when you're navigating through the ads manager, sometimes again, by default, Facebook will end up throwing you in a different one. And you got to make sure that this drop down right here has you in the right account. And you got to make sure that the top right has you in the right account. So is this, so for us to check, let's just go back to the ads manager and see if that's okay. Yeah. In fact, you could do it this way too. check each one. Okay, so that's your problem. That's your problem. That's your problem. Is that they're running conversion ads, but they don't have the confirmation page set up as a custom conversion. So Facebook doesn't know what to convert. Facebook doesn't know that's the page you want to take them to. They know your landing page. They know your, they know your, they know whatever link when they set up the ad, whatever link, watch for example, go back to the ad. And, and you, you brought it up, you clicked on the third tab when we first jumped here. We can see where that, whatever link they put in there, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, go back to the ads manager and then click on any of these ads and then click on the third tab, which is ads. So let's um, see. So when they set up the ad, they have a link. So, so they put learn more or register now, whatever the call to action is, that button Let's see, you're probably in a, is this the right ad account? No, this is a different ad account. So I think we're, I don't know if the ads, the ad accounts are. This one. This okay, one. so click on. Ads? Do you want me in ads? Or can let's we? click on the blue one. Let's, let's, let's check box. Let's check uh, one of them first, either the first one or the second one. Mm -hmm. Edit? No, 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 no. Just, just check the box mm -hmm. to the left. There you go. And then click on the third tab. Okay, so now let's click on edit, open up any of these. So they have, they have two, two different ones going here. So whatever link they have right here, it doesn't even matter. Like, so this learn more button, the call to action button. So that learn more, scroll down a little bit. Let's right. see where. Um, this way? Yeah. Okay, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, so this is, so right here. So this right here, that's the URL. Okay, so, so, so again, they're just doing it, they're just doing it wrong. That's all it is. They're doing it wrong and this is an easy fix. They put the link there, right? The link, the link to the, to the event, right, event bright registration page is right there. Mm -hmm. But, but you're, but you're running the ad for conversions. So, it doesn't matter about that link. We need it. It you could put that link there because that's where they they click on learn more and they go there. So that's fine. That's that's mandatory. Mm -hmm. But because we're running a conversions ad, Facebook needs the confirmation page as well. Mm -hmm. They need to know that confirmation page. And again, that has to be set up as a custom conversion. And when you clicked on custom conversions, there was nothing there. So you need to get that URL, and that's why I showed you my my page because it's all about the thank you page. Someone goes in and gets my book. They click, send me the book. They go to a confirmation page. It's that confirmation page that is set up as a custom conversion. And if it's not, then you don't need to be running conversions. And if you're running conversions, you're not going to see an ROI. So if so, you don't have the ability to have that um, pixel in the confirmation page, then you shouldn't be running conversion ads. You should be running what other, what kind of you could, ad? You could, you could for sure watch. So close this one out. 
then that's when when you do it, it's event responses, right? Yes, you can just do event responses. So click on, uncheck the uh, two tabs, the one selected, one selected at the top. Yeah, yeah, you can uncheck or just X out. Right do you there. want me to go back to camera? Right. You can, yeah. And then just X out that um, one selected. Yeah, you can either uncheck the box or you could have just Xed out the top. Oh, okay. But um, click on create the green one. So, so yeah, so that, that's why uh, conversions, it has to be set up the right way. And, and, and tell you the truth, that's the most powerful ad. Now, in your case, you're promoting an event. So this other one could be super powerful as well. And that's what you have to for sure test. If you're testing multiple ads, that's one you need to be testing is the event, event responses as well, since it is a, an event and it's a Facebook event and, and we're promoting it here. So that would be engagement. Click on engagement mm -hmm. and then scroll down and it would be event responses. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the basic setup right there. And then you just go through it. So, so again, conversions, they, 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 ha they, 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 they were halfway there. They just didn't, they just didn't slam. They just didn't slam dunk it. They just had a few, a few things wrong. So, so in your case, if, if you have to, I mean, Eventbrite, if that's where they're registering, um, you got to just see if you, so did you reach out to Eventbrite or, or how, I don't even know their system as far as their web pages. Do you have access to a web page or, or, or anything like that? You mentioned you can add it's your a, pixels. It's a link. It's, it's a, a link. landing page basically. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so on that landing page, are you able to add a pixel or not? Well, I don't know. I, I have to ask that question, but yeah. Facebook and Eventbrite are partners, you know, yeah. so they have their own language and I know that they can yeah. correspond with each other. That, that's know? why that right there could be, could be the best one is event responses. The, the, the conversions again, it's only, it, it's the best ad. It's the best type of objective for, for, for getting someone to buy something or getting someone to opt in and download something mm -hmm. because all about that, 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 that next page. So conversions is only, is pretty much only when you're, when, when you're running it off of, off of Facebook and you can control that page. Mm -hmm when you can control that, 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 that confirmation page, because again, that's what I'm converting. I, I need my pixel on, I, not the pix, not just the pixel, but I need it. I need to set it up under a custom conversion. So if you're not going to do that, then, then I would go this route. I'd go engagement event responses and, and, and promote the event that way. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what you want to test for sure. For sure. For sure. And, and again, if, if you're, if you're going to run conversions, then, then, switch up your back end where you can make sure that you manage and you can control that landing page, that, that confirmation page. Mm -hmm. um, that's what you have to, you have to be able to do. You have to be able to do right. So reach I would If I were you, I'd reach out to Eventbrite and say, Hey, am I able to put my Facebook pixel on any of these pages? Like after a person purchases and they're taken to a confirmation page, what's the, can I put my Facebook pixel on it? That's, that's, that's the question. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you yes or no. And, and, it, and if it's a no, then, then it's, then conversions is not the ad you're running. You want to, you want to run event responses. Got it. So David, um, how, I, I don't know if you sent that to us already. How much do you charge to manage this, um, campaigns and how does it work with you? Well, is this all you guys are looking to do is, is promote this for the next four weeks? And, 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 and is that kind of all, all you're looking to well, do. That's our most immediate need. Yeah, that's our immediate <laughs> need. Correct. So we're going to be very focused, but but there's going to be, I will say that after that week, we want to create multiple follows with the women, especially the one who attended or click on these things. So they get to come to the events and they get to engage and buy a membership.